So do you need a clicker? So here's the clicker. Oh. Point it at the laptop. You can point it at the laptop. Okay. Move. Just here, right? Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Althea. Um, and today I'm just going to share um, a very short um, um, presentation about Hajj. Um, actually, we also have a little booth there, um, if some of you have not noticed. Um, so if you, if you want the real experience or you want to talk to some of our dad friends, uh, please do. I think we're going to hang around until we finish this session. Okay, so it's Hajj. Um, and what, what are we? We started as a social experiment um, in October 2014, interestingly, and I guess by no coincidence, with DBS, which is where we're sitting now, right? The space. Well, not the space, of course, it's at their head office. So the idea was to um, create a social movement that brings the worlds of hearing and the deaf together using tea and silence. And in that, we really hope to achieve a few things. So there are two key missions for us, um, social missions, that is. And the first one is we, we, we want to somehow disrupt this dizzying, unabating pace of life that we are all living uh, that I personally care a lot about because I feel that that's taking us um, further and further away from ourselves and sometimes also away from what truly matters. And so is to, is to support all of us to take that course, to connect with ourselves and to connect with what's um, truly important. Also, coming from the corporate sector for most part of my life, all my life actually, until three years ago, um, I understand how tough it is. And it was really worrying when some years back, a study says that 90% of psychological conditions we have here in Singapore, the root cause is workplace stress. Okay, so, so that's why we wanted a social experiment to start with bringing Hajj. So Hajj is a silent tea bar. We don't have a permanent space. We are roving tea bar. That's why we roved in today to this space. And uh, we go to each of the workplaces, whether they be a corporate space or um, a ministry or any organization. The idea is to bring a different form of employee wellness um, to the workplace. So this, that's the first social mission to uh, mental wellness, essentially. Mental wellness, mindfulness, particularly in the workplace, but in a very novel, different sort of way. The second um, mission um, is actually for our deaf friends. Right? Um, I, I feel that you know, inclusion, uh, true inclusion anyway, is still somewhat elusive in our society. We are doing so much better, and I'm probably um, a lot older than a lot of you here, so I can tell you that what we have now is so much better. Uh, and we are making real efforts in that uh, on that front, but it's still somewhat elusive because I think our understanding of differently able people um, has a lot to do with intellectual skill, because we're still not really bringing um, you know people together of um, different abilities, uh, particularly on on the job front. You know, a lot of employers are not really designing jobs with differently able people in mind. Uh, and so in that, we're still forcing differently able people to do the jobs that, you know, um, so-called mainstream folks do. Uh, and so I think that takes away um, the opportunity for them to realize their potential. And maybe along the way also some part of the dignity. And so what Hajj is trying to do with creating an entirely silent experience, we actually designed it from a human-centered approach uh, with the depth at the core of the service experience. And so the entire experience is silent, and therefore in a world where no spoken words are needed, we want to challenge the notion of disability, because if there are no spoken words needed, where is their disability? And who's the disabled one? But in, along with that, they are the ones who guide you through the entire journey of Hajj, which is what I'm going to go into. So this is some of what we hope to do, the silence, the awareness, the mindfulness that you get the reflection, but also very much um, experiential inclusion, um, where Hajj is concerned. Okay, so what is the Hajj experience? Um, it's a carefully crafted four zone experience. The zones are not necessarily physical, um, they are more um, experience zones. First one is what we call the intention zone. So immediately when you step into the Hajj experience, the first thing you do is you learn to sign for the gap. 
of their friends. Um, so you get to learn, um, th and this is to get you to, what's well, happening to your world immediately, but more importantly, is for you to completely go silent, right? And it's hard if I say, hey, you just keep quiet. But if you are, <laughs> because you would find it really strange, especially since we do this in the workplace. Um, but if you come in and, and then we have this, you know, really smiley, happy, um, deaf TV stairs, we call them, um, to actually teach you a few phrases as well as a few signs, then you almost get into that space of silence quite easily, but also with a lot of curiosity and a lot of novelty, right? Um, we actually get you to learn four phrases, um, simple phrases like thank you, simple but very, um, very thought-provoking. So thank you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and I love you. So you get to learn that, right? Start off. And then um, after which, well, you select the T and so on and so forth. And a lot of what we do, and I'm speaking to um, all of you who are obviously very interested in technology, and you will realize that Hash is very, very <laughs> no tech. Right? Because we're actually trying to do um, something a little bit different, um, but mostly because we want to bring us back connecting with ourselves. I am not saying technology is bad at all. I'm just saying that we hope to provide a little bit of a break and pause. So it really will kind of defeat the purpose of bringing um, tablet for you to order the tea. Mm -hmm. right? And also, <laughs> I always feel that it's a little bit strange that you kind of just point instead of learning how to you know, interact with um, the dev. And so um, what we do is that we actually, first of all, the teas are all named after moons. So we call them tea moons. You don't order jasmine or green tea. You order a tea that's called freshly tranquil. <laughs> <laughs> or undoubtedly quirky. Right? But clearly there's the, the tea that says especially angry. <laughs> Um, Freshly Tranquil was actually a very popular one when we first did it in BBS. It was a beeline from this very busy blankers. Um, we need that bit of tranquility. And so the way they choose it is that actually we have each T mood symbolized by a symbol of nature. So Freshly Tranquil, in front of Freshly Tranquil you have lots of um, leaves. Real leaves, huh? Uh, not fake. Uh, real leaves that we pick from the garden to wash them, so don't worry. And uh, truly intimate would be flower petals. And the idea here, again, is to bring a part of nature that into the corporate space that's clearly not you know, um, as, as um, inspiring. Uh, the coal, uh, this day is getting a bit better. Um, so the idea there is to make it really multisensorial as well. Um, then you get into surrendering their phone. Uh, which is a big deal, um, obviously, and many people negotiate with us to say if they can keep it or not. Uh, then we get into demonstrating a tea ritual to you. Right? So that's um, Joina, who's de demonstrating a tea ritual. I think it would likely be a gratitude tea ritual. So after the demonstration, the participants would then, then do their own tea ritual in silence on their own when the tea has been served. So the way we know how to serve the tea is by the nature symbol that you have picked. If you have a stone next to you, we know you have picked delectably robust. If you have a leaf, then we will give you freshly twined well, for example. So that, that's, the, that's the kind of the second part of the experience. After that, you take it to, usually they take their time in this space, as you can see. Um, and then, they could get into expression zone after that, um, the third zone. They would start doing tea art with tea. So we have the tea as ink. You use your fingers, you start um, doing tea art on paper. Uh, also still in silence. And um, yeah, this is after the experience and then there's a lot of um, hugging going on. Uh, Godwa is actually here today, uh, the one in green. Okay, so the tea art, and also they would also um, write a note, which we call hash on, um, for them to pass on to future hashes. The idea here is that we want to encourage that strangers can write notes of inspiration, encouragement, and love to strangers, and we become the messenger, like a message in a bottle. This is the sharing, so this is the last part. After they finish doing um, the experience in silence, complete silence, they come together to share their personal reflections. Um, and this is 
a very compelling um, segment, right? We have had stories where because this person went into complete silence, he actually found time to grieve for his mom who's passed on just a couple of months before, uh, for example. Or another very senior leader, um, and these are all well-known people, so I won't name more names. Um, they, he actually remembered his fishing rod, which he used to love to fish so much, but the fishing rod has been sitting in store for the last 25 years. So, so the idea is to connect with yourself. It's not to, you know, to make you just leave, leave the corporate sector and go to the Himalayan mountains. <laughs> uh, but to connect with yourself is something that, you know, that, um, that brings you back a little bit to the joy. Okay, so um, this is just some sharing. Um, we now have a pool of over 38 um, deafies, they call them, or our deaf friends, on, our, um, on, on the Hush family role. Um, and so when we first started, clearly we only employed them on project leases. But interestingly, Hush has taken on a trajectory that, to be honest, I've never even expected. So we were able to have a level of financial sustainability last year to bring five of them on payroll. Okay. I know, it's great. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Very happy. That wasn't something that I thought we could do. We thought we'd just roam around and just have them on standby. We'd call them, you know, um, when we can. So that's that's a, a one part of it. This is the other um, thing that we've done, which I'm also really thrilled about. So we've actually gone into 45 um, organizations. That's what we call Hajj leaders. And through which we have um, actually Hajjed almost 2,000 employees, customers, and partners of these organizations. Um, and because it's a social movement, of course we want more and more people to be being Hajjed, or understanding what it means to just take a moment. And most of them would say that after taking a cup of tea through Hajj, the next cup of tea they take after Hajj never really um, tastes the same again. Or it's never the same when they drink a cup of tea after that. Right? They will take a moment, even if it's one or two seconds, to pause which is beautiful, which is what we want. We don't need all of us to sit in one corner, cross our legs, and, and not do our work at all. That's not what we need. Um, so this is some of the companies. Um, DBS has been a major, major fan, um, big supporter. We've been actually called back to DBS for seven times now, and there are a few more coming up. Um, they usually bring us in um, for different reasons. Could be strategic planning, could be a team bonding, it could be just a straight out um, employee engagement um, session. Uh, or even for customers and partners, appreciation, I mean. Um, we also do this uh, public session it's called Hush Community, uh, which is a little bit different. Because those are bespoke, so you, if you want to attend Hush, you can't, because these are all for only um, employees of these organizations. So every two months, we actually do a public session called Hush Community. And in addition to bringing um, working professionals or business leaders and um, the deaf together, the hearing and the deaf, we also invite, uh, with our compliments, everyday heroes. So the idea is extending the concept of experiential inclusion, um, challenging the notion and breaking down the wall of not just ability, but also class and means. And so these everyday heroes would be the likes of cleaners, security guards, migrant workers, even social workers, nurses, bus captains, ex-offenders, caregivers, single mothers and assistants. The idea here is for us to really use this space to come together, to understand each other a little bit. So that's what we've done um, where the public session is concerned. So, okay, let me just get done. Okay, um, the, this one will probably be a little bit closer to who you guys are. Um, we're launching Young and Hush. That's not launched yet, but we're launching it, and we just got uh, National Youth Council agreeing to support us. Um, this is again because we, are, we really want to um, support the youth where mental well-being and wellness is concerned, mental health. Uh, and that's something that I'm, I'm personally um, very, um, it's very personal because I've actually got um, you know, young and dear ones who are battling um, mental conditions within the family. So that's something we hope we can do more of. Uh, we just did our pilot launch and interview was well received and we are refining the experience. Um, Everyone asked us after the corporate sessions, you know, how to bring their friends and colleagues to Hajj. And we said, well, you can't because um, we don't have a permanent space. And so because of the feedback and all that, we decided we'll bring all that is love about Hajj into a box. 
So we have actually launched Hash in the Well, we haven't launched it. We have actually created Hash in the Box, um, which you have everything you need to create that experience um, in the comfort of your home or at your office, anytime, anywhere. Or you can give silence to your loved one as well. Hash tea moods are the tea moods we talked about. We have actually some that we brought today. So these are the tea plants. Okay, these are some of the, so, so Hash has been really, really, really fortunate and that's why I never expected the trajectory that we had. Um, the media has been really good to us. They like the unique concept of us marrying mental wellness with deaf um, awareness, uh, which is you know, clearly and the whole aspect of uh, inclusion, particularly in an experiential way. And so we've actually been covered um, a lot in, in the news, which has really helped us because without a lot of resources, um, there's no way we'd have gone to 45 organizations. But they came to us actually because of the media mentioned. So, uh, all right. So in terms of the project that um, Tech Ladies have clearly, have uh, very kindly um, offered to support us with, um, is our website. And so the Hush website started with yours truly, way, way, way beyond what you can call a millennial, um, doing the first one with a website builder. Uh, 14 years ago, I actually um, was running and actually I founded a technology business, but that was 14 years ago, right? Um, and now I'm completely on no tech um, in, this, in this project. Um, so I started that, and then um, Ming, our COO, came in and she's, she's definitely closer to millennial than I am, and then we updated it, but it's still it's still, the look is still static, it's a bit dull, right? It's all pictures. Um, uh, the, the user experience is a little bit outdated. Um, it's not really very engaging. There isn't a lot of um, interactivity in it. You can find information, of course. Um, uh, and so and it's also very non-responsive uh, in terms of like a mailing list. It's, you can't really find it. It's not very intuitive if you want to be on a mailing list. I'm really shy saying this in front of all of you, you know, who are actually quite tech savvy. Um, and then, of course, the functionalities, none of this are there in terms of analytics and tracking and all that. So now that we're becoming a little bit more serious uh, and we've morphed from a social experiment and a social movement into more of an impact business model, uh, and we want to sustain that going forward, especially now that we have um, friends on payroll. Uh, so we think that we should do more uh, in engaging the community um, and, and, and get more going for Hajj so that we can spread um, the cause further. So our dreams um, is to have a more multi-sensorial experience that comes through um, from the website as our web front. Um, much like what the actual experience is, uh, which is currently not going through, so, you know, not coming through. Um, so we want to excite, we want to intrigue, uh, we want to convert, because our concept is quite unique, um, and we want to be able to express that intuitively and at a very emotional level through the website. Um, this is some of the dreams where functionality is a concern and I think these are probably pretty, um, probably pretty basic for you guys but we are not there yet. <laughs> um, so these are just some of the things. Um, even the social media integration which obviously should already be there but not quite there. And so we are doing things like Go to Facebook, go to Instagram, then go to the website, and then <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't have to go through so much of this. I think you're all very familiar with the terms here. And so here we are. I wanted to keep it to the the, the time allotted. So, so we just really want to say thank you um, for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you know the organizers and, and tech ladies. Um, those of you who have signed up and the coaches who have offered um, to be driving this project, thank you so much. We are very, very, very grateful. Um, and I shouldn't be doing this. I should probably get Papa or Kim to do this. But I love you has a sign. Um, yeah. Uh, that is this. Yeah, okay. The longer version of I love you is I. Right, because this is the sign of for, for I, and then love is like this, and then oh. <laughs> so it's all really very intuitive, and I've learned a lot. And then thank you is, is just this. So when you see them later, they know that I've just shared with you. But when you see them later, you can do this to say, well, you can say I love you. I think it's fine. 
you should just spread more love. Uh, but certainly say thank you if they actually um, you know, help you with the, the booth experience at Harsh. So that's what all I have um, with Harsh. So please come and like our Facebook page, um, give us a comment, and we hope to see you also in uh, one of our events if you can find the time of the interest. What's your website address? Uh, this is harshtbar.com. Thank you. And so is the Facebook, with the same, same ID. Instagram too. <laughs> Which I actually don't know, but I don't know if I'm young people doing that. But that's the whole thing. Thank you so much for your attention. Up next, bit laggy. Okay, so up next, let's have the uh, head coach and his uh, assistant coaches up to share more about what he intends to build for Hush. Let's put our hands together for Wei Liang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jinxie and Daniel should come too. Do you want them? Okay, and, and then I need to clip you. Right. I'm familiar with this. Yes, very familiar. Can you okay. first? Also, oh, in case you're wondering, yeah, we're, we're recording, so you need to make sure that he touches his voice. I didn't realize you were recording. Now you know. Yeah, now I know. <laughs> no, as in, I didn't realize before I came. Uh, but yeah, okay. Okay. Point at the laptop. Point at the, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So do I still need to use this? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Um, hi, uh, full disclosure, this was prepared yesterday morning. Um, they saw this yesterday. So I'm going to be one main to mainly talking and they'll introduce themselves later. So um, the objective of this presentation is just to show you um, what will go behind uh, if you join this team to do the website for Hush Tiba. Um, so, Okay, so sorry, I said here that it's based, we would describe this project as a CMS with CRM components. So a CMS usually refers to a content management system. So you think of something like a blog or something, uh, a media site where you display content articles, which could be involve visuals and video and stuff like that. Um, the CRM component is the customer relationship management. So for those of you who don't know, it's... Uh, a platform, uh, usually software that is used to manage uh, customers with, basically. Um, so in essence, for the, the corporate uh, partners who partner with Hush Tiba, and any other people who, are, who want to get engaged and involved with Hush Tiba, we get some interaction on the website. So the primary um, problem that what we understand needs to be fixed is the experience of being on the website, which if you go to the website, is a bit, it's a bit dull and dated. Uh, so that's the very first thing that we need to solve. And uh, the second thing, well, you can read there, but basically um, 45 is a great number, but more is better, right? So the website is really the entry point for new partners to come in and get Hush Tiba on board. And they're not just enterprise as well. Uh, all the other uh, community involvement and the youth programs that Hush Tiba has, in addition to now the new Hush in the box. And also, because the main objective of the website is to get the word out of Hush Tiba and get engagement and involvement, social media must be uh, a big component about uh, involved in the application. So, yeah. Now, the last point is actually the real reason why we are doing this, because currently, as Anthea mentioned, the current site is built on a website builder, which is very... Uh, so if you ever worked with a website builder, it's, it's usually very easy to use, but very hard to customize to exactly what you want. So the benefit of doing this as a custom coded project is that you get full control. The downside is you have to know how to do it. You have to know the code. Yeah. Um, Okay, so the plan is, well, we will communicate with Hashtiba and establish a new structure for the website and a new uh, presentation of the information. In addition, we have to provide the interface for the content creation to happen on the website. So a lot of the people who are going to be managing the content on the website will be the deaf people on payroll in Hashtiba. So um, it has to be easy to use um, and it has to be, in, it has to be able to explain how to use it in a way that doesn't require verbal instruction. 
Um, yeah. In addition, the communication aspect of communicating with uh, people who want to be involved with Hashti Bar. So the mailing list, they want to make it as easy as possible to get on the mailing list and to trigger emails to be sent to the people. Uh, and also social media, so Facebook page and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, some of these will be stretch goals. We may not be able to accomplish everything, um, but we will do our best. Yeah. So in terms of how exactly this will go, uh, apart from the very first step, which is to communicate as much as possible about what needs to be accomplished and what the end result is going to look like, uh, we will come up with a list of the things that need to be done. Then we will write the code. We will review the code. So there will be me and the assistant coaches here, Daniel and Jinchi. So we will look at the code and um, so basically don't be afraid to make mistakes because we will look at the code and that's how you get your feedback and a lot of learning happens through the review. And then um, we will merge that code into the full code base, the main working code base. And then uh, we'll get the hash tbar team to look at that and make sure that that's what actually they want. And then we will go back to doing that again if it's not what they want or if not we move on to the next thing. So the plan is to have as much communication with the Hash Tiba team as possible to facilitate f a smaller, quicker feedback loop. Um, and in our experience, that's generally what we want to do in software or in any kind of uh, product development enterprise, really. Uh, am I pointing at the... Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the time time wise, so there will be the weekly coaching sessions that Elisha mentioned every Saturday. So that's where we get together and we touch base and we, uh, where main, most of the learning is going to happen and most of the team working is going to happen. So this would be a very good solid chunk of time that we will all put in together. Um, and this, uh, well, Unfortunately, it's a commitment, but yeah, it has to be done. So the next thing is the throughout the week. So the assistant coaches and I, we will be available throughout the week. We, will ha we have full-time jobs as well, right? Because, you know, we're doing this for a living. Um, but in the evenings, generally, we'll be available and you can come to the office. We're all Tinkerboxes, actually. We're all from Tinkerbox Studios. Uh, and we, we welcome people in. So it's not like it's closed-door thing. So... Generally, we will be open to throughout the week, um, as and when is uh, convenient and that you need help. Uh, ah, yes, okay, so communication-wise, you will learn how to use GitHub, which is where we're going to put the code on. And GitHub has a few features that we use to track what needs to be done and uh, to generally facilitate the communication surrounding executing the project. So we will use GitHub and we will use Slack. So Slack is um, does anyone know what Slack is? Not know. Oh, okay, okay. So that's great. Yeah. So we use Slack as our main messaging platform. Yeah, to communicate. Okay. So this is just like a list of uh, the stuff, the like the the, f the main pieces that have to go in into the the, the system. Um, not exhaustive, but this is most of it. Um, so we will do this in Ruby on Rails. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You can look it up. I hope I have worded it in a way that is not too difficult to understand. Except maybe the last one. You may not know what the last one is. Um, the last one is basically getting that uh, URL that, that gives your website the identity, right? Like hashtiba.com and linking it to your web server. So that when someone goes to that URL, it will go to your web server to get the website uh, page. Uh, and in addition, everything else here. So, okay, the other thing you might not know is uh, WYSIWYG editor. So that's uh, what you see is what you get editor, which is basically, um, think of Microsoft Word, right? When you, whatever you type there, what you see is what you will get when you print the thing. So remember that HTBAR website is going to be a content creation platform for whoever, the administrators. So they have to have a way of putting in the content, including pictures, including video. And to make it as easy as possible, whatever they see should be what comes out at the other end when the article or content finally gets published. So that is uh, what a WYSIWYG editor 
is. Uh, yeah, so we can get into that in more detail when you join, uh, if there are questions later. And this is us, uh, three of us. So my name is Wei yeah, my name is Wei Liang, sorry, I didn't. Uh, and this is Daniel, this is Jin Chi. Um, we are all from Tinkerbox. You labeled Jin Chi as an ex Tinkerboxer. No, 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 no. But okay, okay. So we were all also former interns of Tinkerbox. Uh, I became a full timer after graduation. Daniel joined after becoming an intern, uh, straight out. Jin Chi is finishing up her studies after being an intern. Uh, so she has graciously helped, uh, offered, she didn't offer, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so I was presented this uh, dilemma, really. I, uh, Elisha asked me to pick an assistant coach. I had to pick an assistant coach, and then there were two candidates, and I was like, I can't decide because they're both excellent people, and uh, I think they both benefit from this opportunity as well as they want to contribute. So, uh, you know, after a while, you get trained in this thing, you have to make, choose between one, and you realize, what if you can get both, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, so I got both, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, now, give them the turns to introduce themselves, yeah. Uh, hi everyone, so my name is Daniel. Uh, I am very new to the tech industry, uh, but before... <laughs> Sorry, okay, uh, before I joined the tech industry, I, by prof um, in university I was a psychology graduate. Uh, after I graduated, I was a teacher for two years in Malaysia, so I was teaching history. Um, after I taught for two years, I was a recruitment consultant for six months. And at that point, you can probably guess I was terribly confused with what I wanted to do. Um, but my wife back then was uh, in Singapore and in the uh, tech industry. And so she introduced me to coding. Uh, I went to a boot camp, uh, a full-time boot camp, so not like uh, tech ladies, but similar. Uh, and then got an internship in Tinkerbox, and here I am. So I'm very interested to be encouraged, I guess, to be helping out in this, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Ladies, soon. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, guys. So um, I guess I'm, like, I'm kind of like the greenhorn because I'm still in school but I'll be graduating uh, pretty soon. So I was an uh, intern at Tinkerbox last year, and that's where most of my know-how came from, actually. So uh, very happy to help you guys out uh, with this bootcamp, and I've actually been like, a teaching assistant for two years in, uh, in my university, so uh, teaching programming, among other things. So yeah, very glad to have ladies on board. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, there's a, yes, <laughs> yes, okay, so, thank you very much. <laughs>